Hello and welcome to another Dicey Encounters video, and this is a special Monday video uh, because I missed last week's Friday video, so I'm doing a little special video here. Uh, I'm just going to go over this blog that I wrote last week um, about role-playing games and DMing and stuff, and I'm just going to kind of... It's not really a tips video, it's more like a video essay where I'm just going to talk about this thing and hopefully I'm going to have some sort of structure so you should be able to hopefully follow it. If not, then you can always go and read it as well and uh, I apologise. So you may have noticed by now if you clicked on the video or you've seen the thumbnail that this video is about Gandalf and everyone loves Gandalf and uh, the title of this video is Don't Let Your PCs Be Gandalf and um, I don't mean in a kind of mechanical way, I don't mean don't let them play as wizards, I don't mean let them be grumpy old Ian McKellen men. Um, what I mean is the sort of the type of character that Gandalf is in relation to Middle Earth and Lord of the Rings as a whole. And I started to think about this because I've been reading this book and it's really good. It's called The Fifth Season. Um, I finished it, it's a trilogy. I'm moving on to the second one. And it's a fantasy epic kind of book. And what I really am enjoying about it is that the the main characters are in this world that is imperfect and they act and they actually topple kind of the status quo of the world. They kind of get rid of the, the top leaders because they're kind of, you know, oppressing the sort of the main characters who have these abilities. And then I was thinking about how it relates to kind of Lord of the Rings or more typical fantasy where the characters are trying to get the good guys back on top again, they're trying to trying to maintain the status quo, they kind of stop the bad guys from coming from Mordor or the north beyond the wall or whatever it is. And so it doesn't matter if your characters of your book or your story are trying to um, maintain the status quo or kind of topple it and change it, um, but if the characters are not of that world, if the characters have not grown up um, and been given a reason to do that, then their, their reason for, for fighting the fight uh, is limited. So in both Lord of the Rings and in this book here, uh, there are these characters who are really powerful and they actually have no vested interest in what's going on with the main plot. They don't care about who's in charge, they don't care about the bad guys, and they'll kind of help in a little bit of a way. And that got me thinking about my characters in my Curse of Strahd campaign. In Barovia, in Ravenloft, uh, there is a evil dictator. He's called Strahd, uh, and he rules the land, and it's all horrible. And the players sort of turn up, uh, sort of unwittingly, and the book gives you five or six ways for the players to end up in Barovia, for, you know, without wanting to. Uh, and then they're expected to save the land and defeat Strahd over the course of however long it takes. And I can't help get that feeling that the players are kind of like. Gandalf and his wizard mates who are kind of sent down to Middle Earth and they're like, right, help the men and the wizards, no, sorry, help the men and the elves sort their shit out, stop Sauron, then just come back and it's fine. And if Gandalf was the main character, that would be pretty boring. You wouldn't really feel like Gandalf is having much of a struggle, really. I mean, he's kind of, he's riding a horse very fast and that's very intense, but, you know, it's, it's Frodo and, and Aragorn who are the characters who having the actual struggle and it's Aragorn who's been in Middle Earth and he's been you know weren't waiting to be king and Frodo's the one who spent two years trying to get to bloody Mordor on foot and so you want your players to to be that character you know Curse of Strahd has these kind of uh, very very strong vampire hunter characters already in the world and other sort of allies potential allies um, and so if your characters are coming in already being way more powerful than them or more important or somehow the other so therefore they are detached from all the evil stuff uh, then it takes away this whole layer of, of what Ravenloft kind of is. Gandalf kind of represents the typical D&D &D player character where he's going from re region to region, realm to realm uh, going into separate courts and palaces and talking to you know all these important NPCs uh, and then some of them love him and think he's great and oh you're here Gandalf that means we're gonna win and some of them are like 
Just get out, Gandalf. You're just a troublemaker. And that's what the PCs are like in Curse of Strahd. They've come from somewhere. And then they're just saving people, defeating evil things. Um, very aloof. Because they don't really understand what's going on in there. There's like, oh, it's a horrible bunch of hags. Oh, they're dead now. Anyway, on to the next quest. Uh, you know, and... and um, all this world building that it gives you and all this you know, setting all this kind of um, theme and sense of dread and horror uh, is lost so what I would think would be cool is actually if you had Curse of Strahd uh, adventure and then it gave you a choice or even told you that you should have your players be from Ravenloft itself and have struggled with being kind of ruled over by Strahd their whole lives, right? Because that would be a much more bigger reason for the players to go and fight Strahd. And what's more, there are these famous bounty, sorry, famous vampire hunters who are running around trying to do it and waiting for the right opportunity, trying to find the right treasures. Maybe the players, that's, that could be their call to adventure, that could be their, their sort of hook, their story hook is you know finding these items and you can still do the tarot deck reading which tells them where the treasures are and then you could have cooler things like you know you come back to your town and it's been demolished by Strahd because the he knew that the players are up to something or they helped the vampire hunters in some way or that maybe that coven of hags took your younger sister when you were younger and then you know this is going to be a revenge moment that you finally get to face up to these these hags it sounds, everything sounds very sort of JRPG-esque right now, but it's, you know, I think that's, it's, it's a stronger way to plant the characters in. And I know the reason why they don't do it is because, you know, it's level 1 to 10, so you need to have a way to be uh, in, uh, before and after that adventure. But I think they should still recommend that this would be a much stronger way to sell the story, to invest the players in the story. So, you know, kind of bringing it around back to Gandalf, as we all should, uh, don't let your players be that kind of celestial being that just turns up one day and is like, oh, you know, how can I help? Oh, I've got to kill this thing and do that. Okay, done. Off I go. Um, you know, unless you're trying to keep it really casual and that's fine and it's just, you know, a, sort of a, what do they call it, a chips and beer role playing or whatever it's called. <laughs> I sound so snooty. Uh, but, uh, you know, I would, I, you know, my players talk to me about characters and, and, and sort of uh, motivation and how they're sort of tied into the world and these dramatic things that they want to happen to their characters. And the kind of the sort of the forgettability of the vampire hunters that they come across. It's like, oh, okay, an NPC. Hi, oh, yeah. Oh, well, oh, you can do magic missile, can you? That's, that's neat. Um, you got a silver sword. That's cool as well. Uh, oh, you, you've gone now. Okay, bye. Uh, but rather than having a thing where you tell them, look, these people, you've heard stories about them, maybe you saw them once when you were younger, uh, they're like the coolest, you know, they want, you want to be that person. I just have this feeling that maybe out of the dozens of people who I've DM'd for, uh, I don't think I've had anyone who's, I feel like the, the, the people who are writing these adventures I don't think they understand the kind of players that, that I s seem to play with um, who are quite cynical and you, you need a lot of buy-in and different types of buy-in to get them to actually be uh, interested in, in just saving the land. And then of course there's all the other fantastical supernatural stuff as well, like you have the, the lycanthropes, the werewolves, you have the were-ravens, um, you have the Vistani who can put curses on you, all that stuff can kind of be added to your backstory as well and then when you meet the were-ravens or you meet the werewolves or you meet the vistani then you have this 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 better anchor to the world rather than um just meeting everything and learning everything uh for the first time in seconds um and for that reason just kind of thinking everything's the same really and and it's all just kind of background dressing to your uh, XP and gold gathering sessions and notice I do this when I say XP and gold uh, sessions because that's how you get gold and XP by crisscrossing monsters so yes don't let your PCs be Gandalf um, uh, let them be the people who are had the, have the reason 
to uh, save the world or destroy the world or change the world. Um, don't let them be the people who are helping the people who want to change the world or save the world. And I know it's a whole like role playing thing, like people aren't comfortable role playing um, kind of weakness and being sort of scared or powerless. They want to be, you know, the fucking badass and they want to be that badass from the first session. That's why so many noobs get TPK because they're trying to be badass. But if you just tell them and you talk to them about what this place is like and, you know, it's it's a bit shit and you're not having a great time, but you've always wanted to change it. You've always wanted to beat Stride in some way and, and maybe your parents went off and tried to invade Castle Ravenloft like so many people did before and you never saw them again. And it's just sort of drenching in drama already. Luckily, Curse of Stride is made to be run multiple times, so uh, hopefully in the future I'll get to run it again and maybe even implement some of these things. Maybe I'll even write them down uh, on my website so other people can maybe uh, can have a go as well. Um, and that's going to be it for today. Uh, Short-ish video. I know I've been going for 16 minutes. I'll probably edit it down, but um, probably will. I definitely will. But there will still be a video coming up this Friday, so please uh, subscribe so you can get that. Um, and if you liked this video, then do give us a like. Head on over to DiceEncounters.com. Have a read of some of the other stuff. Um, I just put up a uh, Warhammer sort of short story based on one of my, my models that I have. And I'm also going to start a new uh, section talking about community management in the games industry. Because if you think DMing is hard, that is a big bag of snakes. Well, that's it. I hope you have a good week, everybody. Uh, I will see you in the next video on Friday. Until then.